In this video, we'll talk about lymph node. This is a high yield video for USMLE step one. Lymph node is a highly specialized secondary lymphoid organ. Secondary lymphoid organs are those organs where immune cells are not born, but they reside there, they get activated for their job. Lymph nodes are fully committed in regulation of the immune responses. Lymph nodes are encapsulated, a bean-shaped structure which are populated by dendritic cell, T cell and the B cells. Lymph node is distributed all over the body. Adult humans will have approximately 800 to 1000 lymph node, generally sited in neck, axilla, thorax, abdomen or in the groin region. Now let us talk about the uh, subdivisions of the lymph node. So here we can see the efferent lymphatics and here we can see the afferent lymphatics. Okay, let me simplify. This is the entry and the exit point. But before that you can see there, there are blood vessels also coming in. The afferent lymphatics are the entry point for several immune cells into the lymph node. The efferent lymphatic is the exit point for several cells out from the lymph node. Now blood vessels can carry several cells like T cells and B cells into the lymph node. Dendritic cells which can recognize antigen and pathogens in the periphery can enter the lymph node through the afferent lymphatics. And from the efferent lymphatics activated B cell, T cell or the dendritic cell can circulate out. So here is an important structure, the outer cortex. Just beneath the outer cortex, there would be the paracortex and inside there is medulla. So paracortex and the follicle are two important structures in context of lymph node. The follicles are pretty much follicular roundish structure in the lymph node. Follicle and paracortex harbor different type of cells. Paracortex harbor the T cells. So Paracortex is simply the T cell zone and follicle is the B cell zone. So B cells and T cells get activated and several process of differentiation of these cells happen in these regions. So in that context, the lymph nodes are super in important in terms of immune modulation. Now here, let me simplify it even more. So imagine the lymph node is a temporary army base camp. So the army uh, reside there in different barracks, right? So here, let's say the rangers residing in this barrack and the SEAL teams are residing in a different barrack. So exactly in the lymph node, there are dedicated regions for T cells and the B cells. So obviously the paracortex is the T cell barracks, let's say, and follicle is the B cell zone. Now imagine a situation where a police officer is approaching this temporary army base camp to give the news of a possible invasion by a terrorist or let's say. So this police officer is very equivalent to the dendritic cell. The dendritic cell enters the lymph node or the army base camp through the efferent lymphatics and interact with the T cells to activate them. So once the dendritic cell is in, it would interact with many cell types. But before that, let us try to understand the histology of the lymph node. So if we look at the histology, this is the capsule, this is the medulla just to orient you. And now the most important structure that should catch your eye is the follicular region and the paracortical regions. So now train your eye to understand more follicles and paracortex regions. Now inside the lymph node, what happens is there is, there is T cell activation with the MHC2 derived peptide presented to them via the dendritic cell. So when dendritic cells present these peptides, T cell recognize them via T cell receptors and with a series of signaling cascade, T cells get activated. Eventually, T cell activation lead to proliferation of these T cells and they would grow in number. In a different slide, I have a detailed presentation about the T cell activation. You can quickly access that through I button or description. Now let's talk about the follicles. In the follicle, follicular region, T helper cells would interact with the B cells and that would lead to activation of these B cells and once activated B cells would also proliferate and proliferating B cells would eventually undergo important processes 
So the activated B cell would undergo affinity maturation for their receptors and class switching. That means they would produce a specific type of antibody based on the infection type. And affinity maturation ensures only the high affinity interactions are selected. And ultimately, they would differentiate into plasma cell, which secretes the antibody, and that leads to the effector phase of the immune response. So I hope it was useful, and we appreciate what are the different zones in the lymph node. If you need more notes and flashcards, you can visit our Facebook page, or you can follow us on Instagram to get more notes. You can support our channel using super thanks. You can contribute by using PayPal, Paytm, or UPI. And... See you in next video.